Hi everyone, thanks for having me speak to you today about my experience voting in Texas post Senate Bill 1 with a significant amount of limitations due to my disability and SB 1 making it incredibly harder to vote more than it already was to begin with while trying not to let this new law disenfranchise me. I'm honored to share my voting rights story with you all today and the audience who are some of America's best and brightest. First, I want to give a visual description of myself for those in the audience who might need this accommodation. My name is Laura Halverson, and I'm a white woman with dark blonde hair, blue eyes, I'm wearing glasses, a white top, and a teal sweater, sitting on a large power wheelchair, that I have a breathing mask on that's connected to a ventilator that I use 24 hours a day that's currently hanging on the back of my wheelchair. I'm a registered voter, and I have been since I was 18, Then I voted in every election I can since then. I'm a resident of San Antonio, Then I have a very progressive form of muscular dystrophy, where I have very limited muscle movement, almost like quadriplegia, Then I also have chronic neuromuscular respiratory failure. I require assistance of a caregiver, also known as a personal care assistant um, or an attendant, um, for a majority of my activities in daily living. Due to the progression of my uh, disability, over the past 22 years as a voter, I've gone from needing no assistance at all to using accommodations like going to the front of the line with my mobility device, to curbside voting, voting by mail, and now almost total assistance, marking my ballot unless I'm lucky enough to have a right to a secret ballot using a handheld remote that every polling place is supposed to have for people with disabilities um, to where I wouldn't have to have assistance of someone marking my ballot for me, which in Texas especially, many of us would like to keep our ballot a secret. Fast forward to my voting experience post SB1 in March 2022. I was recovering from an injury with more than normal amounts of pain and still needing to be very COVID cautious due to how high risk and immunocompromised I am. So I voted mail-in ballot during the March 2022 primary elections. My personal care attendant, who's a green card holder, wasn't willing to assist me with my mail-in ballot and signing the assister's oath due to the threat of criminal liability and potential impact on her legal status with the new assister's oath and SB1, which I totally get. So as a result, I had no choice but to open and mark the ballot myself, the process which took me multiple attempts um, and I had to take a significant amount of breaks due to the 30 or so down ballot races on my ballot and it took me about two days to complete my ballot, which was significantly longer and harder than if I had been assisted. This also included taking a lot of time to complete the information on the envelope such as my social security number, uh, my Texas ID number, making sure they were both legibly written along with the signature on my ballot as well so it wouldn't be rejected. I submitted my mail-in ballot well before the due date but um, that it showed it as received but it didn't show it as accepted on the Secretary of State ballot tracking website until well after the election was over where there wouldn't have been any time to correct my ballot had there been any errors on it. Um, so, so because of my experience in March 2022, I voted in person in November 2022 um, just to make sure my vote, I could see, was counted. Um, before the November election, I spent a significantly long time researching, researching if my polling place had a handheld remote since I had recently learned about it as a way where I can still vote privately as I was still uncomfortable placing my attendant in the position where she would have had to sign that as sister's oath since there's so much confusion even to this day about it um, with this new law. So I didn't ask for her assistance um, at the polling place other than her just monitoring my ventilator when we were there. Um, when we got inside the polling place, my um, my attendant and myself were the only ones wearing masks inside in a fairly small room that didn't seem very well ventilated. And so voting in person to this day still puts my health at high risk since I still have to take COVID precautions due to being so medically fragile. Using that remote, the handheld remote, 
I ran into a bunch of glitches and errors, but, but finally after about 30 minutes and dealing with multiple issues, I was able to submit my ballot. One of the poll workers at the end even gave me two I voted stickers because he said I'd work twice as hard. Since 2022, I voted in every election since and still faced issues. Most recently in the 2024 elections, I voted by mail in the May primary runoff election and my ballot was rejected due to incorrect or missing social security number or driver's license number. But I know for a fact both my social security number and my Texas ID number were correctly written on there. I corrected my ballot anyways just before the deadline, but on the Secretary of State website, my ballot still shows as rejected, but when I called the Bear County Department of Elections, they said it was accepted, so I'm not sure who to believe or even know if my vote was even counted. I'm disappointed the state's working so hard to make elections less accessible for people that I hope that the judge deciding the federal case for Senate Bill 1 will come to the right decision. But I'm going to keep on being stubborn. I'm going to fight like hell for my right to vote as well as the right to vote for others. And so I hope you all will too. So thank you for your time today.